The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the workflow for testing cannabis using the BioMariu GeneUp Pro s -Tech Salmonella Assay. Polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, requires strict laboratory protocol and procedures to prevent contamination and ensure accurate results. Utilization of a laminar flow hood or a clean room for sample preparation and PCR steps are recommended. Note, for this video, steps are performed not utilizing a laminar flow hood to better demonstrate the steps. Adhere to your facility's policy on wearing personal protective equipment, or PPE, when performing PCR testing. Protective gowns, masks, and powder-free latex or nitrile gloves are recommended with changing gloves frequently to prevent cross-contamination. Part 1. Preparing your samples for incubation. Required materials. Buffered peptone water, BPW. Filtered enrichment bags. Serological pipettes to deliver 15 milliliters. Incubator set to the temperature of 42 degrees Celsius plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius. Samples. Begin labeling your sample bag with the sample name or ID number. Next, aseptically open the bag. To avoid contamination, never reach into the bag to open further. The bag is separated by a lateral filter. It is important for you to put your sample into only one side of the filter. If the filter is in the way, push it to the side with a sterile implement or pinch the filter from the outside of the bag and pull to the side. Next, add sample to one side of the bag until you reach one gram. With a sterile serological pipette, add 15 milliliters of room temperature buffered peptone water to the sample and close the bag. Massage by hand for 15 to 20 seconds to homogenize the sample. Place samples into the 42 degree plus or minus 2 degree Celsius incubator. Ensure the bag is closed during incubation. Incubate for 24 to 28 hours in an upright position. Part 2. Sample Lysis. Required materials. Your enriched sample, 20 microliter pipette and filter tips, Trumner Vortex Type Mixer, Trumner Vortex Mixer Adapter, Gene Up Lysis Tube Holder, Gene Up Heavy Rack Holder, Gene Up Lysis Tube Remover and Capper, Gene Up Lysis Kit. Before we begin, you will first need to create a plate map. In the Open Software, click on the From Template icon. Select the Gene Up Cannabis from the Run Template list. Next, click on the check mark to open the template and confirm detection format is correct. Next, Subset Editor. Click on the plus icon and name the subset. Next, hold down the control key and drag to select where the PCR tubes will be placed. Click on Apply to save. Click on the Sample Editor tab and then click on the subset drop-down menu to select the subset created. Name the samples according to their sample position on the plate map. Name and save your plate map once created. Remove the lysis kit from the storage area. Allow the kit to come to room temperature. Note, if you are using a new kit, ensure that the sealed foil pack is vacuum sealed and the desiccation pack is present. The GeneUp Lysis Kit should be stored at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. After opening the kit, if stored at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius, the kit can be used until the expiration date. Note, after opening, the kit can also be stored at room temperature, 15 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. If stored at room temperature, the kit should be discarded after three consecutive months or until the expiration date, whichever comes first. Note. If stored at room temperature, do not store the kit back at 2 degrees Celsius to 8 degrees Celsius. Never open the lysis tubes with magic caps. If a lysis tube is open or is leaking, it is considered a contamination event and should be discarded into a biohazardous waste receptacle. Place the lysis tube holder into the heavy rack holder with the notch oriented in the H1 position. 
aseptically remove the lysis tubes from the bag by pushing them out instead of reaching into the bag to pull them out. Remove the required number of lysis tubes from the rack by using the edge of the heavy rack holder to push them out of the rack. Next, place a lysis tube for each sample in the GeneUp lysis tube holder according to the plate map. Note, if less than eight tubes in a strip are required, the strips can be cut apart and only the used tubes are placed in the GeneUp lysis tube holder. Return any remaining lysis tubes to the foil pack and place back into the kit box. If the tubes are clear, shake to resuspend the die. Using the capping tool, press down on the tubes to secure them in the lysis rack. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Place the lysis tube holder back onto the heavy rack holder. Visually inspect the magic cap to ensure there's no liquid on the magic cap before adding sample. Massage the sample for 15 to 20 seconds to homogenize the sample into the enrichment broth. Next, using the 20 microliter pipette and a filtered tip, withdraw 20 microliters of the sample from the filtered side. Transfer the sample to the lysis tube and lightly pierce the center of the magic cap, depressing to the second step of the pipette plunger. Keep the pipette plunger depressed as you remove the tip from the magic cap. Ensure not to insert the pipette tip too deep into the lysis tube. Visually inspect the tubes for any liquid that may have escaped from pipetting. If liquid is present, remove by dabbing the top of each affected tube with an individual sterile, lint-free swab. Remove the lysis tube holder from the heavy rack and place the plate onto the vortex adapter and ensure that the black fins of the vortex adapter lock the lysis tray in place. Vortex for 5 minutes at 2200 RPMs. Remove the lysis tube holder from the vortexer. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Lysed samples are ready to be tested. Lysed samples are stable for 72 hours if stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Part 3. Sample PCR. Required materials. Your lysed samples. Gene Up Heavy Rack Holder, 5 microliter pipette, 5 microliter Gene Up Tips, Gene Up Pro S Tech Salmonella PCR Reagent, Gene Up PCR Tube Holder with Lid. Before starting the PCR step, ensure the Gene Up self test has been run. If working with refrigerated samples, allow samples to come to room temperature. Visually inspect the lysis tubes for liquid that may be adhering near the top of the magic cap. To force the liquid to the bottom of the tube, remove the lysis rack from the heavy block and swing the tray down, then immediately stop. Place the lysis tube holder into the heavy rack holder with the notch oriented in the H1 position. Visually inspect the septa of the lysis tubes for any drops of liquid that may have escaped during vortexing. If liquid is present, remove by dabbing the top of each affected tube with an individual sterile, lint-free swab. Remove the required number of GeneUp Pro s -Tech Salmonella PCR reagent tubes and place in the GeneUp PCR tube holder to reflect the plate map created in the software. It is important to only cut off the required number of PCR tubes in the freezer to avoid numerous freeze-thaw cycles that could degrade the reagent. Set a timer for five minutes, allowing the PCR tubes to thaw. Place the PCR tubes in the spinner and spin 10 seconds at full speed, ensuring the liquid is at the bottom of the tube. Note, always make sure the spinner is balanced by placing a second PCR tube holder into the other side of the spinner. Using a single channel pipette. When using a five microliter single channel pipette, depress the pipette plunger to the first stop. Note, 
It is important to depress the pipette to the first stop before piercing the septum to avoid disrupting the beads that are located at the bottom of the lysis tubes and aspirating them into the pipette tips. Pierce through the septum of the lysis tube. With the tip down as far as possible in the liquid, slowly release the plunger to aspirate five microliters of the lysed liquid. Pull the pipette out from the lysis tube using a multi-channel pipette. When using a multi-channel pipette, attach the required number of pipette tips to match the number of samples you will be pipetting. Depress the pipette plunger to the first stop. To ensure stability, align the multi-channel tips with the septum of the tubes. With your non-dominant hand, gently press down on the wider section of the multi-channel pipette to pierce the septums until you cannot go any further into the liquid. Slowly release the plunger to aspirate five microliters of the lysed liquid. Pull the pipette out from the lysis tube. It is important to not push past the first stop on the pipette when aspirating liquid, as it will lead to withdrawing the incorrect volume. Visually check the volume in the pipette tips and dispense the liquid two-thirds down the wall of the corresponding PCR tube. Place the lid on the PCR tube holder. Place the PCR tubes in the spinner and spin 10 seconds at full speed. Note, always make sure the spinner is balanced by placing a second PCR tube holder into the other side of the spinner. Wearing new powder-free gloves, remove the PCR tube holder from the centrifuge, and with the lid on, Place the GeneUp PCR tube holder into the heat block of the thermocycler. Make sure to line up the A1 position from the PCR tube holder to the A1 position on the heat block. Push down on the top of the lid, then remove the lid by squeezing the fins on either side. Close the door and start your run in the software.